Cross-elasticity of demand, shortened to XED, measures the responsiveness of consumer demand for one good to a change in the price of another good. The demand for many goods is determined not only by the price of the product in question, but also by the change in the prices of other, related goods. XED helps clarify the exact nature of these relationships. The equation to calculate the coefficient of cross-elasticity is XED equals the percentage change in quantity demanded for good A over the percentage change in the price of good B. For example, if, as a result of a 10% increase in the price of Pepsi-Cola, the demand for Coca-Cola increases by 25%, then the cross-elasticity of Pepsi with respect to Coca-Cola is plus 2.5. This is a positive value. As the price of Pepsi rises, the demand for Coca-Cola, a substitute, also rises. Cross-elasticity can also have a negative value. For example, if the demand for motor vehicles falls by 2% following a 20% rise in the price of motor insurance, the XED of motor vehicles with respect to motor insurance is minus 0.1. Goods are identified as complementary goods when the coefficient of cross-elasticity is negative and as substitutes when the relationship is positive. However, there is another aspect to cross-elasticity, exactly how responsive, that is, how elastic, the demand for one good is to a change in the price of another one. Economists use the concept of proportionate to assess the degree of response. For example, if the demand for one product changes in the same proportion as the price of another one, then the result is proportionate, and XED will equal 1. If it does, then cross-elasticity is said to be unitary. When the coefficient is less than 1, the cross-elasticity is inelastic, and when it is greater than 1, it is elastic. So, in the case of Pepsi and Coke, the XED is elastic at plus 2.5, which means that Pepsi and Coke are considered fairly close substitutes. The greater the coefficient, the closer the substitute, so that if the cross-elasticity is positive and infinite, the goods are perfect substitutes. In the case of motor vehicles and motor insurance, while the negative coefficient indicates the goods are complements, the low value, at minus 0.1, indicates that the response is much less than proportionate, suggesting that changes in motor insurance premiums have a relatively small impact on the demand for vehicles. Firms are interested in calculating cross-elasticity because it helps them map out their market to discover who their competitors are and how significant they are, as well as identifying significant complementary products. For example, if a motor manufacturer estimates that one of its models has a cross-elasticity of plus 2.0 with respect to a similar model produced by a competitor, then any drop in price by the rival will have a greater than proportionate effect on the quantity demanded of its car. This makes the firm vulnerable to competition on price. For example, Assuming the XED for two substitute motor cars is plus 2.0, a reduction in the price of one by 5% will lead to a 10% reduction in demand for the other. In markets with few competitors, cross-elasticity between rivals is likely to be very high. In the case of complements, the degree of cross-elasticity indicates the extent to which the goods are in joint demand. Goods are in joint demand when the purchase and use of one good requires that another good is also purchased, such as a torch requiring a battery. In this case, a firm is vulnerable to a price rise of a complementary good. If batteries rise in price, fewer torches may be sold. In many situations, firms can gain more control over their market by merging with competitors or with suppliers of complementary products, or indeed, they may develop their own complementary products, such as Google developing its own smartphone, the Pixel. Clearly, information on cross-elasticity is very useful in that it helps firms gain a deeper understanding of their market, enabling them to make more rational decisions about the best way to allocate their scarce resources and to maximize profits. However, there is a word of caution. Like all elasticities, cross-elasticity values are not fixed and can vary considerably between groups of consumers and over time. This means that business decisions based on historical cross-elasticity estimates may be subject to information failure if values change between the time of making a decision, say to launch a takeover bid, and its implementation.
Economic events and shocks, such as Brexit, can also result in unpredictable changes to price and demand relationships, which reduce the reliability of existing cross-elasticity estimates. For this reason, data on cross-elasticity on its own will not provide sufficient information to make rational business decisions. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk.